You know, we're honoring Abraham Lincoln tonight, and he's really my favorite president. He's the second most important president we have. The most important, of course, is George Washington. <laughs> but the second most important president was Abraham Lincoln, and he was a remarkable man. He literally began life in a log cabin and ended his life living in the White House. He was a simple man who never went to more than a few years of rude and primitive country schooling, and yet his words literally changed the world. I suspect if you've traveled, you've had the same experience I've had, that if you begin to talk about history or government or the philosophy of government, that the name Abraham Lincoln has a strong and powerful meaning everywhere in the world. Thomas Jefferson may have written the words that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, but it was Abraham Lincoln who personified that in the life of our country. You know, we ought to keep his example in mind as we face our current circumstances, because he said, as our case is new, so must we think and act anew. And our case is new. We're in the minority. We don't have the White House. We face uh, a tough couple of years. And what do we need to do to come back? One thing is, is that we need to remember what America expects of us. They do not expect blind, unthinking, unreasoning, angry opposition to our new president. They expect us to be respectful. They, respect, they expect us to be people who are thoughtful. They expect us to agree with the president. If we agree with him, to support him all we can. If we think he's right on Afghanistan, let's back him to the hilt. If his mind is open to persuasion, they expect us to make a reasonable case for our arguments. And if we oppose him because we think he's wrong, they expect him to do so thoughtfully and responsibly and respectfully. We ought to have a positive and optimistic agenda that matters to families and communities. Oh, we're great about talking about taxes. We're great about talking about national security. But we better have an agenda that speaks to people who are worried about educating their kids and keeping their jobs and seeing their community become more prosperous. And we've got to talk about it in ways that they can get. And finally, we better stand for what we believe in. If we don't believe it really, if it's not passionate, if it is not said with conviction, if it's something we think we're sort of triangulating and we've run a poll or a focus group to find it out, they will smell it out and see it for what it is, which is hypocrisy. We better figure out who we are and what we believe in and say it and have the courage of our convictions to make the argument. Because that's what they want. American people don't necessarily need to agree with us 100% of the time. They just need to know that we have convictions and principles, that we've thought the problem through and we care about them. And if we do that, we can win them. And we've got to do the right thing.